So hey there, tonight I'm making homemade meatballs in a homemade marinara sauce, and we're not having pasta, right? Because we're counting our carbs. No pasta for us. Instead, we're gonna have our meatballs on a bed of perfectly seasoned ricotta cheese that has Parmesan cheese in it and basil and garlic. Oh my goodness, you will not miss the pasta at all. And then as our side dish, instead of French bread, we are gonna have homemade Caesar salad. We are gonna make our own Caesar salad dressing. And I promise, after you have tasted this Caesar salad dressing, you will never ever, ever again buy bottled salad dressing. We're gonna whip up a delicious meal tonight. It is gonna be about 18 net carbs. So let's get going on some homemade meatballs, marinara, ricotta cheese, and ooh, a Caesar salad. So we're gonna do some prep work first. We're gonna make our Caesar salad dressing, we're gonna make our ricotta cheese mixture, and we're gonna make our meatballs. And when those three things are all ready to go, then we'll actually cook our meatballs and put together our dinner. So to make the Caesar salad dressing, you need a blender. I have a Ninja blender with this little small bullet blender that goes on top. So I just put my ingredients for the Caesar salad dressing directly in here and snap it on my Ninja and whoop, whirl it up and it's ready to go. And then I can just Put the lid back on, put this in the fridge, and keep it for the next week or so. Add a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil, some black pepper, just, you know, to your liking, a little pinch of kosher salt. You want to add one clove of minced garlic, and I'm loving this tube of garlic from Gourmet Garden. I have all of their herbs, and I have ginger and garlic that comes in the tubes. It makes it so easy. So one tablespoon is equivalent to one clove. I'm just gonna eyeball it. A quarter cup of grated Parmesan cheese, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, and one tablespoon of white wine vinegar. Next up is anchovy paste. You can add this or you can omit it. It's entirely up to you. I like the flavor of a little bit of anchovy paste and I just buy it in this tube and I'm just gonna squeeze in just a teeny bit. Next, I want about one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice. And the last ingredient is a half a cup of real mayonnaise. Not Miracle Whip, use the real stuff. So you're just gonna pop this on your Ninja blender or your regular blender and just blend it away until it is smooth and creamy. So I have a homemade, you are gonna die for it, Caesar salad dressing that is gonna knock your socks off. That was so simple. One container, ingredients you probably already have, and now I'm just gonna pop this in the fridge and it'll be waiting for me when I'm ready to make my salad. This is lots of dressing. I can probably have five or six or seven salads out of the quantity of dressing here, but I would say you probably wanna eat it within a week of making it. So next, we're gonna make our bed of ricotta cheese, which is our pasta substitute. You can use ricotta cheese that is whole milk or part skim milk. This is all that my grocery had, so I'm using skim milk ricotta cheese today. And I'm making a dinner for me and my husband, so I'm serving two, so I'm only gonna use about half of this container. Spoon your ricotta cheese into a small mixing bowl. Season it with some black pepper about two tablespoons of some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Don't use the stuff in the green jar, just really get some good Parmesan cheese. Sprinkle that in. And next, back to Gourmet Garden, I have my garlic and my basil. We're just gonna put a dab of garlic. There is garlic in almost everything we're making tonight, so just a dab and the basil. So fantastic. And really just season it to your liking. Give that a good mix. Get all your basil and your cheese and your garlic incorporated into your ricotta cheese. Oh, it smells so good. I just got a whiff of the basil. Okay, ricotta cheese is done and we're gonna put that back in the refrigerator. Now it's time to make our meatballs. So get yourself a large mixing bowl. Make sure it's large enough that you can get your hands in there without stuff you know, flying over the sides. So get a large mixing bowl. And to it, add one pound of ground beef. You can divide that up. You can do ground pork. You can do Italian sausage. I'm just doing ground beef tonight. And to that, we're gonna add a third of a cup of dry breadcrumbs. They're unseasoned. And a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. Add just a dash of nutmeg. Nutmeg, for some reason, always makes meatballs taste better. A Little bit of salt and pepper. Kosher salt, of course. 
and I'm gonna take one egg and drop it in a little bowl and kind of beat it up before I add it to my meatball mixture. Then our last ingredient is a quarter cup of warm water. It kind of loosens up that ground beef and melds everything together and it keeps your meatballs from being dry. So I have a sheet pan with some aluminum foil ready at the side because we're gonna mix our meatball mixture together, form meatballs, and then just line them up on a sheet pan. Gotta use your hands. There's no substitute for this. Get your hands in there, get everything mixed together. Just don't squeeze it really hard. You don't want tight, dense meatballs. You want light and fluffy and airy meatballs. So just use your fingers to kind of mix and turn everything together without squishing it and making it compact. So once everything is incorporated, just begin to make your meatballs. Now I like a good size meatball. I don't like little teeny wimpy meatballs. So I'm gonna make one that is about a little bigger than golf ball size. And again, just pat it together. Don't squish it super hard and line them up on a baking sheet. We're gonna make about probably 10 meatballs. Of course, my husband and I will only eat four or five tonight with our dinner. But tomorrow night, we always make meatball subs with the leftover meatballs. And if we have some meatballs left after that, we will make homemade pizza with pepperoni and meatballs on it. It is such a great meal. These meatballs, you can get so much mileage out of them. So plan on having leftovers the next night and see what kind of unique dinner you can come up with. So I actually ended up with eight meatballs, which is plenty. So now that we have all of our prep work done, our ricotta cheese is made, our Caesar salad dressing is made, and our meatballs are put together ready to be cooked. So you wanna take a large skillet and mix in half of vegetable oil and half of a very good olive oil, just a little bit, you don't need a lot, and bring that up to a pretty hot temperature. We're gonna carefully put our meatballs into the hot oil and brown the meatballs, turn them carefully so that they're browned on all sides, remove the meatballs and put them on a baking sheet that is covered in tin foil. After all of your meatballs are brown, we're gonna continue to cook the meatballs in an oven on 350 degrees for about another 10 minutes. We wanna make sure that they're completely cooked through before we add them into our sauce. So after you've taken your meatballs out of the pan, you wanna discard that olive oil. Don't wipe your pan clean though. You need just a little bit of that oil left in there. And we're gonna put in about half of a chopped yellow onion. Saute the onion over medium heat for about five or 10 minutes until the onion is translucent, but not brown. We're gonna add in a half a cup of red wine. Again, you can use a dry red wine. I'm using a cooking wine. And we're gonna turn our pan up onto high heat. It's gonna get really loud and we're gonna scrape all of the great bits out of our pan into that cooking wine. Add in about a tablespoon of minced garlic. And we're gonna let the liquid almost evaporate. Should take a couple minutes. Then we're gonna add in two cans of crushed tomatoes, a little bit of basil, salt and pepper, and then we're gonna take the meatballs because they're fully cooked at this point and we're gonna add them carefully into our simmering marinara sauce. We're gonna put a lid on the marinara and let it cook for 20 to 25 to 30 minutes. As the meatballs cook, make sure to turn them several times, pick them up gently because they're, they're so moist inside you don't want them to fall apart. So my meatballs are in the sauce, just marinating away. And I'm gonna cook it like that. I'm gonna turn them several times during the cooking process, but you wanna cook it for about 30 minutes total until your meatballs are completely cooked through. Your marinara is starting to thicken up and it's gonna smell oh so good. Now that everything's ready to go, we're gonna take that ricotta mixture and put it in a big, beautiful bowl. Just put a thin layer, spread it out on the bottom of the bowl. Top it with one or two meatballs and a little bit of that marinara around the outside edge. Look at that beautiful dish. Oh my goodness. Take another bowl, fill it with your romaine lettuce, top it with your homemade Caesar salad dressing, a little bit of some freshly grated Parmesan and some croutons if you'd like them. And there you have the perfect homemade dinner meatballs, marinara, ricotta, and Caesar salad. Seriously, you cannot beat this meal for only 18 net carbs. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Many more to come because I love to cook and I love sharing my recipes with you. And now it's my dinner time. So I'll see you later.